EFDD. Now on behalf of the EFDD group, Mr Farage. Very surprised. We're here in what I've been told repeatedly is the home of European democracy. And so surely we could have taken the opportunity this morning to celebrate the Dutch referendum last week uh, in which the people said no to EU enlargement, no to the deal with the Ukraine. And no doubt had it been Turkey, an even bigger number of people would have said no to Turkish accession. So it was a victory for democracy, but in particular, it was a victory for a little organization called Geenpile, a group of young bloggers who managed to get together 427,000 signatures. Uh, so it was a victory as well for direct democracy. And this in the week when we remember um, that Gian Roberto Castellegio, the genius behind the Five Star Movement in Italy, has died. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the new politics. Uh, and yet, uh, we were told by Mr Juncker uh, that if the Dutch voted no, it would be a disaster. But he hasn't mentioned it today at all. And indeed, your, pre your predecessor, Mr Van Rompuy, my old mate, says we should just ignore the Dutch and carry on blithely. So what we're seeing is the big battalions of vested self-interest doing their best to completely ignore the will of the Dutch people. Well, I think things are changing. I don't believe these institutions can survive 21st century technology. I think the will of the people is changing politics in a way uh, that makes all of you in this room deeply fearful, and so you should be. And as we in the United Kingdom enter the final countdown of our referendum, um, all eyes are on this Turkish deal. And I think what we see is we see the bosses of the EU bowing and scraping before Mr Erdogan, who gleefully walks all over you, tramples over human rights at every level. Um, and for Mr Juncker to tell us this morning uh, that we're making progress, let's just examine that. 1.8 million people have come to the EU in the last 18 months, and we've sent back 300. Doesn't sound, sir, like it's going very well to me. The one group that will be pleased, though, are ISIS. They have now managed to put 5,000 of their operatives into the European continent, according to the boss of Europol, something that should send a shiver down our collective spines. I have to say that, in the end, I think is what the British referendum will turn on. I think we will vote for Brexit, and the reason is we'll vote to put our own safety first. It is going to be, as it was in the Netherlands last week, a battle of people versus the politicians. You may have the big money and the big businesses and Goldman Sachs, but we've got our armies of bloggers. And in the end, the people's will is going to prevail. This place won't survive. Mr. Eriksson has a question for you. Go ahead. Thank you. I have a question to uh, Mr. Farage, who is um, sitting behind the British flag. Now, uh, don't you think that uh, quite embarrassing for many Brits that a, a, a speaker who is speaking behind the British flag is celebrating a referendum which uh, the only winner is Mr. Putin, who, who now is celebrating that Europe is not united behind the cooperation with Ukraine. Peter Farage. Well, I'm Go ahead, Mr. Farage. But I'm equally not very keen on going to war with Mr. Putin. Strikes me as being a very silly idea. What did we do? We encouraged the overthrow of a corrupt but democratically elected leader in the Ukraine, uh, and we, in, in effect, have poked the Russian bear with a stick, and we're surprised when he reacts. We shouldn't be. I think we should all have our own individual nation-state democracies, and I want a Europe, Mr. Eriksson, where we trade together, cooperate together, work together, our friends and good neighbours with each other. What I don't want is that flag, an anthem, and all these presidents. I don't want political union. I want genuine European friendship. 